high-level members of the Illuminati, of the elite, of the global crime syndicate, meet with lower-level members, and basically it's like a corporate crime seminar. They are there planning the course of the world. In July of 2000, Alex Jones smuggled himself into Bohemian Grove. All the evidence is right here, exposing the Illuminati, uh, their different uh, allied organizations. Uh, it's uh, all on the website. Uh, this is uh, George W. Bush and his father uh, giving speeches. And here's Richard Nixon. And here you have uh, President Jimmy Carter. It's at Bohemian Grove that Alex Jones insists the Illuminati hatch their plots. It's how to set up the world government, what they're going to do, what their plans are. And there you go. Under the gaze of a giant concrete owl called Molek, Alex Jones secretly photographed the mock human sacrifice that launches every gathering. This is a shot of the high priest right here over the flame with the people on their black and red robes. There are a bunch of different rituals that they do, and they're inducting a member in a mock human sacrifice. And uh, it, where's the uh, giant concrete owl? Uh, Moloch. Moloch. Uh, right here. You can see the owl right there. And uh, it was uh, quite chilling, though. I can, I can assure you. If your neighbor was doing simulated sacrifices in their backyard was worshiping Moloch and doing a mock human sacrifice of a child. Would you let that neighbor walk your dog? Would you let that neighbor babysit your child? Would you let that neighbor run your country? Hartford again. Still waiting for Mr. A. Um, I've dropped off Mr. A. Um, he hasn't got a lot of time, but uh, I know exactly where we need to go and meet him. For some reason, Mr. A has now chosen another industrial estate to meet us at. It's all very cloak and dagger, or maybe just a wild goose chase. We need to make absolutely sure that uh, that Mr. A cannot be identified from this interview. I, I can't stress strongly enough the importance of um, concealing his identity. The thing about the Illuminati, they're famous for these terrible, um, blood-curdling, horrific forfeits that they, uh, they warn any member will suffer who gives away their secrets. As Tim abandons us again to pick up the elusive Mr. A, we explore our second deserted industrial estate of the day, now reflecting that our pursuit of the Illuminati might be a little dangerous. You don't want to mess with these people. Uh, you really don't know. These are... Uh, the, in the United States, we have the Mafia, which is a pretty, pretty mean group. The Illuminati put the Mafia in the shade. Oh, really? And almost everyone that, that learns about what I do says, why are you still alive? I want the Illuminati and the globalists to know that there are many of us that are willing to sacrifice our lives, that are willing to go to your camps, that are willing to die I did get threatening phone calls with people calling up with a voice changer, Mr. Jones, it's time for you to back off. And at that point, four guys came up and surrounded me. And uh, they said, you better back off, you better stop what you're doing. And I go, I'll never stop. You guys are destroying humanity. I mean, it's my instinct to fight against tyranny. And one of them pulled out a little double-edged knife. And the big one, one of the bigger ones, slugged me right in the nose and broke my nose and blood began spraying. But I'm, I'm not a badass, but I, I can stick up for myself, especially in a situation like that. All of us can. And so I viciously began attacking them. I know that they have lots of records on me and that they're monitoring me. And 
How are they doing? Is it electronic? Yes, they have antenna arrays that monitor all electronic signals. If you use the right combination of keywords, like if you say murder, dynamite, blow up, kill, assassinate, uh, then these computers will immediately transfer that conversation to a person sitting at a desk. So they know I'm here now? Absolutely. Just seeing if I can see them. <laughs> <laughs> I've still never seen an Illuminati. Or is it Illuminatus? But now I'm told of yet another organization that this most secret of societies has infiltrated. The Bilderbergers. Every year, the Bilderberg Group meets for a few days in five-star accommodation, amid 10-star security. The Bilderbergers held their first meeting in 1954 in a small Dutch town, in the Bilderberg Hotel. Since then, their annual meetings have attracted many of the most powerful men and women on the planet. These guys really do run the world. Lords and the heads of the biggest banking dynasties and Dutch and British royalty and Rockefellers and secretaries of states and UN secretary generals and German chancellors and the head of the House of Saudi going and attending this meeting. Many believe that the Bilderbergers form the most powerful organization of all that they are the Illuminati in disguise. I've come to Washington, D.C., capital of the world's richest and most powerful nation. But how much of its power lies with the Illuminati infiltrators of the Bilderberg Group? American free press journalist Jim Tucker has battled the Bilderbergers for most of his life. He also battles those who don't share his less than flattering view of them. What the hell do you mean, innocuous group? You think they're getting together to play pinochle? If you had the brains God promised the groundstone, you'd be all over this damn story. You're a journalistic whore. Bye. Bilderberg's motivation is to control uh, the entire world. They're drunk with power. And they see themselves as masters of the globe. It's their plantation. We're their slaves. And the secrecy with which the Bilderbergers surround themselves generates endless suspicion. You have the people who are making public policy outside the purview of the public. And it really makes a mockery out of the idea of freedom and democracy. A founder member of the Bilderberg Group is one-time Labour Chancellor of the Exchequer, Dennis Healy. What did he have to say about its obsession with secrecy? It wasn't secret, it was private. We didn't want the press there because we wanted people to be able to talk freely. Jim Tucker has tried to infiltrate Bilderberger meetings year after year. But of course, every now and then, some journalists would find there was a conference and uh, sometimes try to get in, and of course, he was thrown out. And of course, they were people of utter unimportance. Uh, Dennis Healy is cute. He is real cute. They don't meet to play pinochle for three days. If they didn't have impact on public policy, they wouldn't bother meeting. Absolute bunkum. I never heard such nonsense. <laughs> Tony Blair attended the Bilderberg meeting before he became prime minister. Bill Clinton attended the Bilderberg meeting before he became president of the United States. And it's significant that they attended before. The before. Meeting, so it's kind of like. They're, they're vetted to become, to, to be allowed to become the leaders of. of their nation. That is utter bunkum again. They just 